attached or we are affiliated to the Anglican Church, but you do not have to be an Anglican or a Christian to attend the school. So I said we teach the NCA and the IB programs. And what our parents are most interested in is the academic success of their students. Our academic results are very high. You can see here the St. Peter's results compared to the results for the rest of New Zealand. And our IB is above average in our scores also. So we have very good academic results. Our students go to universities in New Zealand because New Zealand students usually go to school in New Zealand, but international students go to other universities and we always have a few New Zealand students who go to other universities. These are some of the universities our students have gone to in the last two or three years. We teach holistic education, so the body, the mind, and the spirit. We also have a well-being curriculum, which looks at the health, the emotional and mental health of students, as well as their physical health, because we know that students are under a lot of pressure in this modern world. We have authentic learning, so we teach things on a practical aspect as well. And here you can see people with our beekeepers, the science, the agricultural students look after the bees, the science students test the honey to help make the honey, the marketing students will help with marketing plan, the graphic students will design labels, and it's all different aspects of business because many of our students come from wealthy farming backgrounds and they will become business owners of multi-million dollar businesses when they graduate, so they do need to know about the business of farming. We have a prep school, years seven and eight, and these are our younger students. We have small classes throughout the school. The younger students are in classes of 23 or 25 students. The senior students, the average size is about 14 students in a class. Yeah, yeah. We have a very beautiful campus, if, as you have seen. We also have over 40 different cultural activities and clubs, and we encourage all students to take part in different activities in the school. We have a very good orchestra and very lots of opportunities for children to be part of things. We also have a house music where all students are involved in different music activities. The young boy in the corner is from Shanghai and he's a very talented drummer. He's there, he's been there for one year at the moment, and his, his band has just been got into the final of a national rock music competition. Our sports centre, we have a very, um, we encourage all students to be involved in sport, and you can see the big gymnasium and the fitness centre at the bottom. We'll have more photos on that shortly. In years nine and 10, children can choose to be part of an academy as an option. So that many children will know how to play football, but they've never been taught the skills involved in it. They've just learnt. So we actually, they can choose to become part of an academy and learn the skills involved in playing those particular sports. We also have academies for students who want to be um, learn a bit more about a sport they, where they are taught by a professional coach. We have a golf academy and you can see the driving range, the short game, and we teach not just the driving range but the skills involved and you can see in the corner they are very successful. Yes, 
and if you look at the very top of the golf academy, you can see some boarding houses with orange roofs right next door to it. Um, the many, some students come and they want to be professional golfers. And the young girl that you can see holding the trophy has just been awarded a scholarship to go to America for four years as a, as a golf in her particular university. Um, but many of the students take on golf because of the business aspect of it. And so we, and some of them do it for life. So we have sort of three streams. We have the people who want to become professionals, the ones who want to be good business people, and also the ones who just want a sport that they can enjoy. We have an equestrian academy, and there are 40 horses that live on campus. The horses belong to the students. And you can see the young boy in the corner. He is from Chengdu, and he um, has his own horse at the academy, and he is going to go to Australia take his horse with him and attend a um, coaching, tertiary coaching thing in Australia. Yeah. Yes, it does have an extra cost because you've got to um, feed the horse and look after the horse. It costs about an extra $8,000 a year to have your horse there, but you have to buy or lease a horse wow. to be part of the program. Yes, he paid about 20,000 New Zealand dollars for the horse. And I thought he was going to sell it, but he's going to take the horse to Australia with him. From New Zealand, it's okay, yeah. We have a swimming academy because we have two heated swimming pools, one inside, one outside. And we, um, students train before or after school. We also have on our grounds the New Zealand National Velodrome. The um, New Zealand government helped build it there and it's where the New Zealand Olympic team train. But because it's on land that we owned, the, our students get to use it also. And we've just had students who were national, no, international. Well, we've had one student who's just become a world champion in her particular field and she trains here. I do think we're probably the only school in the world that has an Olympic-sized velodrome on our school grounds. We have a rowing academy because there is a, um, the National Rowing Centre is near our school, and rowing is a very popular sport in New Zealand. But we also have even if you're not part of one of these elite academies, people go along to support the other students that are playing. And in the corner, you can see that we do have fun sometime. And the very tall man dressed as Uncle Sam is our principal. Dining room, we have food for the um, all students, whether they are day students or boarding students, eat in the dining room. And the food is very good. Too good sometimes. Yeah. And all the teachers get lunch too. We have 470 boarders, and this is a senior boy from Thailand and his room. It's very much, he, all the senior students have their own room. Younger students have sort of shared rooms, depends because they're all built slightly differently. But boarding is about fun, being part of a big family. The children are supervised all time. They're never alone or never left unsupervised. And they have activities on that they can take part in. One of the big advantages of boarding is supervised homework in the evening. And these are some of the activities that the boarders will do. more activities. Boarding is about having lots of friends and lots of things to do. 
this is another um, a slight overall view of the school campus. You can see it's very big. Um, usually I point to it, but I can't. No, you can't. So, in the middle, there's a Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a little sports area, which we just saw. I know oh, we didn't see that. Yeah. 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 yeah, and on the bottom right hand is the boys' boarding, bottom left hand is the girls' boarding houses. Yeah, yeah these, yeah. okay. Okay. Video, yeah. I'll just open that up. Because every time you, every time we change screen, I've got to do this. Yeah, I'll check if they can see it. So, do you want to open up boarding and dining first, yeah. or boarding, yeah? Boarding and dining. All right, can everyone now see the St. Peter's Cambridge boarding and dining screen? Yes, thanks, Wayne. Great. All right, we'll, we'll play this right now. So, yeah, I assume it's the, the males. Senior. The room is fairly, fairly spacious, one per room. It's a cottage. There's a common area in every house. So that's the boys heading off to eat. Yep. Yeah. Across, across the field to build up a bit of an appetite. It's up the little staircase there. Uh, quarter past seven or seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. School starts at eight fifteen, and they have six lessons a day. Mm -hmm. So that's the dining hall we're just coming into now. So they can dine outside as well if they want to. So inside and outside. Yep, yep, they do. So that so it's all pretty open plan and eating there. Yep. It's like Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. So going over to girls boarding. Uh, they had breakfast from around, they started at half past six and it goes through to about quarter to eight. Oops, this is going into girls' boarding. You see quite similar to some of the boys' boarding houses. There's just obviously all girls, quite spacious. Girls. Um, yeah, and so it just depends on what house it is. I mean, in in for for many many for most students it's um you get this but with some of them if they're juniors the majority of juniors are in shed two two, two. and some of them have the younger ones have doors that don't go quite to the top of bottom mm -hmm. so we can still keep an eye on right. them. and the other one is a sports area sports and performing arts. Can everyone see the St. Peter's Cambridge Sports and Performing Arts? Great. Thank you, Kathy. All right, on the uh, the big gym complex. 
So it's a pretty big gym, two full-size basketball courts and a climbing wall. Very spacious. And then you go through to a strength and conditioning or just a, a gym space. Again, there's lots of things to do there to stay fit. Squash courts, and then past the squash courts um, uh, is the swimming pool. There's two, two pools, one's covered indoors, one's not covered outdoors, both are heated. Heated to about 28 degrees. So, it's, so they're doing a bit of kayaking and mucking around on that particular day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In New Zealand, yeah. Go past the uh, hockey turf. So it's used for hockey, but for a whole lot of other things. Um, it's floodlit, so you can use it at, at night as well. And one of the advantages is, and why we have New Zealand students boarding, is that everything is there so that parents don't have to take them off to different activities after yeah. school. Everything is at the school. 40%. And most of our, for boarding itself, we would have, I think, about 80% are New Zealanders. Yep. So we're going to perform again now, so performing arts is pretty big. Also at the school, so we're coming into the auditorium. So there's a bit of music going on in the foyer and then going through and they're doing a bit of a production there. This year we did Bonnie and Clyde and I think that's just a, a set block out of Bonnie and Clyde. And the auditorium sits about 600 students, so you can get quite a few in there. And then through music, a very strong music department. Doing everything really from classical right the way through to rock. And um, here we are at Equestrian. We've got two Equestrian arenas, one the lower one, which is that one, and then the upper one, which is up here. So there's actually 50 horses here now, 50 horses. Plans to increase it to about 80. So I think we're going now over to have a look at the golf. Let's see. This is all after school activity. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, then they get into all this stuff. So it's down the road to golf. So we've got a drive. Yeah, a little wee scooters, scooters. <laughs> so a bit of so it's a driving range. And behind it, so the putting, the short game. Oh, they're all synchronized. No, no. <laughs> That's the driving range and putting. And then carrying on through the sports precinct down this driveway uh, into the velodrome. So on the left, uh, both sides of the road have got the horse paddocks. And then just down the road, it's not that far to the to the velodrome. Yeah. So, unlimited access into a velodrome that cost about 40 million to produce. Mm. So, it's one of the best in the world. Olympic class. So, it's good, good value. Then, out of the velodrome, um, they do a lot of road cycling as well. So in outdoor and indoor cycling and now over to Rowan. This is about 10 minutes from the school. Mm -hmm. So 
So Lake Karapiro, again, it's a um, we're New Zealand rowing space, so we have full access. We've got a boat shed down there and really close to the school. Yeah, so I think overall there's something for everyone and heaps of opportunities really is the key and we have the ground in which to do it. Yeah, so we do, we're um, in general probably the best overall sports school in the area and certainly in rowing, um, sports like rowing, golf, cycling, probably best in New Zealand, certainly for rowing, yeah, best rowing club in the country. Uh, on a, mainly, in the, mainly in the regional area because rugby is really strong across the whole country, so we wouldn't be one of the, because we're not that big, um, and we're co-ed, so we don't have, yeah. only have about 400 boys here to practice. And they're all boys, so, yeah, so we fare pretty well, really. Um, we have different sports and successes, and our, news, our girls basketball team is the best in New Zealand, mm. and they recently competed in the World Championships in Greece and came fifth in the world. Wow. So we have, you know, different little sports. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys can see now, I'm just put the chat box uh, open as well. And I was wondering if you could just touch on um, some of the, the academic requirements you have, in particular for China, um, our listeners who today and also for, for Vietnam, or whether you distinguish between the two, the two markets. Um, and if we could talk about the academic you have English, um, the, the requirements for English, and also for the general well, we teach ESOL or English as a second language at the school, and we have an intensive English program. So we can take students with quite low English, and they would be mainly doing English programs at the school mm -hmm. until their English got high enough. Mm -hmm. They do have to be able to communicate before they come. So we do need to have a reason, not a reasonable, but we, we want them to be able to communicate. So I try and interview each student mm -hmm. and talk to each student to judge their verbal communication mm -hmm. before they come. Mm -hmm. When they are yeah, in China or, yeah, or, or, by or Skype or, or WeChat mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be wonderful, but not as much to provide it. Um, we also ask that they write an essay as part of their application form, just a hundred words or so. Mm -hmm. And please make sure the students do it in your office and you watch them do it, because we don't want Cousin Mary doing it mm. for them. Yeah. But we will test their English when they arrive, and then we will put them in appropriate classes. Mm. Obviously, the older they are, the more, the better their English has to be to cope with mainstream courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they can do English language classes right up in, I'm shouting still, do I still need to shout? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. They can do English language school classes right up until they graduate. We give them that support. But they, if they're coming in with IELTS of about three or so, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they would probably need about a year of intensive right. English to come up to, yeah. Yes, it depends. I mean, we, we're looking for students who are above average in their academic grades anyway. Mm -hmm. So a student who's got good academic grades will usually make good progress with their English. Mm -hmm. So we don't take people with low grades, mm -hmm. okay? So we're looking at above average or a B grade, you know, sort of, and it varies. Mm -hmm. For the Chinese students, we're looking at grades of about 85 or 90. 85. Yeah. 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 Um, if they're doing A levels, we're looking for Bs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
No. We, we make a determination when they come because it's, as you know, it's really hard to actually assess a student's English mm -hmm. before they come. We've had issues before where friends have helped them a lot. Yeah. Okay. But we, we assess their English at the beginning of each year and during the year also if it's appropriate. So it's ongoing assessment and when we can move them on to mainstream classes, we will. Mm -hmm. And we will keep the parents and the agents involved or informed about the progress that they're making. Right. Most students who come into the intensive English would probably have six months of English and then they can go into a couple of classes, maths and uh, science class or something. And then by the next year, they're probably doing about four mainstream classes and two, right. two lots of English. Yeah. Same fees. Oh, good spotting. Oh, I told you <laughs> yeah. I had to shout. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, no, I thought I think you're okay. Maybe they just couldn't hear my questions. Uh, I was just going over some of the the English language requirements and the school fees. Um, maybe they can hear me now. Now it's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I need to get a I need to get a new laptop with a greater mic. I think we're definitely loud here. Uh, yes. So yeah. So the school fees are the same whether you're doing English language, you're doing a pure English English yeah. language course before mainstream mainstream will be the same as well. Uh, so how, uh, what, and what about the school fees? Do they differ between year seven to year 12? If you could break that down as well. I think. Not on there because. Did you, did you put it on the USB here? Yeah, it's on yeah. the USB. So if I go uh, St. Peter's information. School information. School information. Schedule of fees, okay. I'll put it for myself. Okay, guys, yeah, okay, if you could break that down. So the top part is the tuition fee, and then we have the accommodation fee. We, the boarding fee is 14,700, but they, during the holidays, if they're staying in New Zealand, or when we have leave weekends and we organise our homestay for them, we well, that's extra because not everyone stays in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, then there are some other fees also. Oh. I estimate that the total expenditure for a year is round about 64,000 New Zealand dollars. Mm -hmm. That includes everything, including pizzas on the weekend and things <laughs> like that. Right. If they are, so I think the families need for about that. If they are doing something extra like horse riding or a lot of golf, then there would be an extra charge mm -hmm. too. But for most people, fall within the sixty-four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. They have to. They have to pay the acceptance fee of 1000 and then the New Zealand government doesn't want to pay anything more until they actually get their visa. And then they're given a two weeks in which to pay all the fees. They, we want them to pay a year's fees normally, but we can, some, there are exceptions to that. And if they pay for a year, they can then apply for a visa for the length of their program. Mm -hmm. So if they were coming into year nine, they would pay one year's fees, but get a visa for five years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's quite an advantage. And then once they have the initial visa and they have to renew it at the end of the year, then my office can help them do that. Because mm -hmm. getting the new first visa is always a difficult mm -hmm. thing. Um, could you just 
still in primary. I know not for sure, but they have to show that they're going to be able to support the child mm -hmm. right through. And that's something you'd actually have to ask the New Zealand Immigration in China. Because, oh, yeah, because they don't necessarily share that with right. us. Yeah. But they, they have to show that they've got enough money to support the child or enough income mm -hmm. to support the child for the length of their program. Like, like, Yeah, and that I know that used to be a problem for some Chinese families because not all income was declared, but I think that's less of a problem now. Yeah, unless they are doing a high level academy, like a high level um, golf, you know, they want to be professional golfer, mm -hmm. then they're doing more golf. Um, and also maybe like we've just sent, we've had some trips that go overseas, the girls that went to Greece to take part in the basketball, mm -hmm. sometimes then they have to pay a bit extra. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's all optional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, but I like to build it in there. The other thing is that we will look after the student from the moment they arrive to the moment they go home. So my office will be taking care of them the whole time. If they stay in New Zealand over the holidays, we will be looking after them during that time. Right. They don't require a guardian, but if they're very young, if they're year seven and eight, it's really good if they have someone in New Zealand who can mm -hmm. speak Chinese and English to help us look after them. Yeah, we do all that and we, yeah. As I said, if everything, if they need to go to the doctor, we have nurses and doctors. If they had to go to hospital because they had appendicitis or something like that, then either myself or someone from my office would go and stay with them in the hospital and look after them while they're there. Yeah. All right, well, I'll put it to you guys now. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please make use of this opportunity. Uh, we've got two very senior members of the school right here that know everything about the school. So I would love you to ask as many questions as you can. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll wait, wait a minute or so. Yeah. So um, my, one of my questions is, and a lot of my... Uh, a lot of my partners here in China like to ask as well about the alumni network. Um, they, they like to know who, um, who, who went to the school that's gone on to do various things or leaders or sportsmen or uh, members in the business community. Um, uh, you said you're going to a Hong Kong alumni network, so I'm just interested more about the alumni. Pretty extensive alumni. Um, I'm pretty well connected. Hong Kong, where um, we have about 20 alumni coming, and it's being hosted by um, the Mowbray family uh, within the Zuru showroom. So Zuru, one of the biggest manufacturers of toys in the world, and they're, they're part of our alumni. So that'll be pretty good. So yeah, alumni all over the world, um, and, and across a range of different professions. Also coming in Hong Kong is I want to call him the New Zealand High Commissioner, but I don't think that's his title anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, the New Zealand High Commissioner in Hong Kong is also one of our alumni. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, Thank you very okay. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.